the action may be slow, may be fast, but there is a nothing without action. This is the very nature of nature. This is the very essential quality trait of everything in this world. In the entire galaxy, prakruti, nature is engaged in action. With that we are born. We are a part of this prakruti. We are the microcosm. The universe is the macrocosm. M-A-C-R-O. Macro means large, big. Micro means small. We are the microcosm. What is there in the external world, what is there in the globe, what is there in the world is present. The five elements are there outside functioning always. The same five <laughs> elements are present in us working always. So we are born with activity, action, change, movement, karma. Number two, we are born with the tenacity of purpose. We are born with the willpower. And that willpower can be seen in the baby, in the child. The baby is lying on the back. The child is in the cradle. And the child has the tenacity of purpose. How long should I be lying like this? Can I not sit up? Can I not turn to the sides? With that tenacity of purpose, with that determination to move, it begins to turn this side, that side, it sits up and it stands up and it tries to walk. Thousand times the baby may fall, but it does not give up its pursuit. It walks, succeeds in walking. That determination, that willpower is Rajya. And by practicing wantonly, deliberately, our tenacity of a purpose gets strengthened. Our willpower gets strengthened. Raj Yoga is to strengthen our ability to determine and the determination itself is further emboldened, strengthened. The first one is Karma Yoga, actions. The second is this so-called Raj Yoga, which is also inbuilt in us. Willpower is present in us. Third, we are born with love. Every person is blessed with a heart. Heart has two activities. The physical activity, it throbs. And the other one is the urge to love. What after all is life without le love? I want to love someone, somebody, something, and I would like to be loved. Affinity, attachment, longing, urge to be of some use because of our love. This is the love with which we are born. That love, when it is purified, when it is modified, when it is ennobled, when it is divinized, it is called Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti is pure love. Bhakti is unselfish love. Bhakti is a Sanskrit word. The nearest equivalent in English is devotion. Devotion is an emotion, a noble emotion, a pure emotion. And what is an emotion? It's a feeling. What is that feeling? Positive feeling. Feeling of affinity, feeling of love, feeling of one's own urge for something to be loved and to love. This is the love with which we are born. When you love, where you love, how you love, with what intensity you love, the expression of love, the communication of love, the language of love may change from person to person. But love is present in every heart. And there is no person without heart. That heart is blessed, it is given to us, and it is in love that is Bhakti Yoga. 
And then we have the curiosity. We are born with the curiosity to know, curiosity to learn. And that curiosity is the basis, beginning for what? Knowledge, to know, to know. All these four are interlinked. We are born with activity, we are born with love, we are born with willpower, and we are also gifted with that curiosity. When that curiosity grows properly, when it, given, when it is given the righteous path and when it reaches the ultimate destination, it's called Jnana Yoga. We merge with it. This interlinking of the four yogas automatically takes place. In some people, the curiosity may be more. In some people, the love may be more. In some people, the willpower may be more. It's only the predominance. All the three traits are present in this. The tamasic nature, idle nature, lazy nature. And there is activity in his dynamic nature. There is also that calm nature, tranquil nature, which is more is important. Some are highly dynamic, rajasic. Some are highly lazy, inertia, lassitude, lethargy is more in them. They would not like to come out of the bed. That is the tamasic nature. And some people are always calm, serene, cool, tranquil, they are not in a hurry. They are very much balanced. That is the sattvic nature. Similarly, all the four streams, we have the four rivers in India. One is Ganga. He is a symbol of the Jnana. Lord Shiva is supposed to have Ganga on his head. That means he is a jnani. Ganga is symbolic of jnana or knowledge or wisdom or blissful awareness. That Shiva Ganga, jnana Ganga, we equate with that jnana yoga. And we have the great wonderful river Yamuna, black in complexion, dark in reflecting, and this is there near Mathura. In Mathura we find Krishna, Ratha, Rasakrida, Gopikas, dance. It's all full of exultant divine emotion. The urge for love, the expression of love, and it is reflected, and we find Yamuna symbolic of Bhakti. If you go to Mathura even today, the Rikshavala also says Radhe 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 Radha is a symbolic of pure love, ecstatic love, transcendental love, ennobled and ennobling love, divine and divinizing love. This love is present in Mathura because of the presence of Lord Krishna and Radha and that is symbolically presented in that wonderful river Yamuna. And then we find the willpower where they are born, the terseness, the firmness, the strength of the Himalayas in which they are born, determination of the bhakti, determination of the curiosity to know and be merged with the highest knowledge we find Saraswati, Gupta Nadi, secretly it is traveling, silently she is traveling, irrigating. On the banks of river Saraswati, we find hundreds of ashrams doing a global work, spiritual work, vibrating the entire country with the spiritual luminosity. And that Saraswati is symbolic of our activity. All of them are from Himalayas, the willpower. India is therefore a symbolic presentation of the four yogas, the willpower, wherein 
they are born all of us have the will power if you love the girl you have the strongest will power to follow her know about her love her to be loved by her and succeed in joining with her traditionally we present it a devotee has the urge to be in the place where his beloved is present sa lokyam loka is the area loka is the place loka is the a place where the beloved lives suppose the beloved is in a delhi i somehow see to it that i go to delhi live in delhi sa lokyam tirupati venkata chalapati is present there i love him i would like to live on the hills tirumala hills your favorite girlfriend is going to prashanti kutir you somehow work out the way to go to prashanti kutir sa lokyam it's not enough if you go to tirumala hills it's not enough if you live in vaikuntha or the so called kailas or Delhi or Prashanti Kutir, where the beloved is present, you would like to be close to him, close to her. That is a sa mi piam sa mi pam, as close as possible, as nearby as possible to the girl, to the boy, to the god, to the friend, to the mother, to father, to the country. Whatever you love, sa lo kiam to live in the same place. For that you require the determination. You get it. yourself transferred to the place where the girl is living. You get yourself transferred to Tirupati where Lord Venkateswara is present. You would like to get transferred to Rishi Kesh where your favorite deity is present, and that is the will power. You have the curiosity to know where she is, where he is, and that curiosity comes to factory. and you have your will power coming to functioning and you have your activities directed towards that and you have the will power to achieve your goal all the four strings begin to match in our country at prayag the will power of the three rivers is seen the merge triveni sangam the buddhi the intellect the will power the urge to love and the activity all the three are there in triveni sangam from there they proceed further for what to merge with the sea the origin they lose their identity prapatti sharanagati they become one with that then what is saraswati we do not know what is ganga we do not know what is yamuna we do not know ultimately we merge with the brahman with the absolute reality with the akhanda ananta sachidananda parabrahman ajityam ajyutam anirvachaniyam where is ganga where is yamuna where is saraswati where is that will power which has prompted them all to merge and to proceed further that is absent that individuality is lost all the three can be seen put together this particular university wants the whole sam yoga integrated yoga functioning together when do we do it that samipyam next sarupyam you would like to be like your beloved deity lord venkateshwara has a name i would also like to have a name lord shiva has the three wonderful vibhuti rekhas i would like to have the same he has the third eye i would like to have a tilakam like that we would like to imitate sarupyam go to shiva temple at the entrance to dwarapalakas will be there similar to shiva you go to vaishnavite temple you find two dwarapakas palakas like lord vishnu resembling him if your girlfriend is fond of roses you would like to carry roses if she is fond of rose saree you would like to have your rose garments 
sarupyam. You would like to imitate that's how the religious forms have come into existence. Then we do not stop, the willpower does not stop there. The activity does not stop there. The unfoldment of love does not stop there. It goes higher, sayudhyam. Merge with the highest. You become one with the highest. You become one with the beloved. Until then our curiosity does not stop. Until then our activity does not stop. Until then the willpower does not take rest. Until then the love does not get idle. It goes on blossoming. It goes on unfolding. And that is the highest. In the practical world, suppose you have a vessel. And in that vessel you have water. What is water after all? Collection of water drops. What is the sea? Sea is collection of water drops. You remove all the drops, the sea disappears. What is the mind? Collection of thoughts. Remove thought after thought after thought, there is no mind. What is a straight line? It is a collection of points, one place, one after the other, one after the other. Remove one point, the second point, the third point, the straight line disappears. Sea or water is a collection of drops. Straight line is a collection of points, place one after the other. Mind is a collection of thoughts. Remove the thoughts, mind disappears and there is absolute happiness. And the drops when they are lost, there is no, see there is no world at all. Now the example, there is a vessel, container. In that container you have the water. Water is a collection of drops. Beneath you have the heat. You have the heat. And as the heat increases, as the experiences of the world increase, good, bad, right, wrong, favorable, unfavorable, troublesome, painful, pleasant, all these are the fire. When that fire increases, when the heat increases, when the container gets heated up, the water inside also gets heated up. Now it is a necessity, necessity to come out of the world, necessity to come out of the heat, necessity to escape into the place where there is no heat, where there is no trouble, where there is no suffering, where there is no up and down, where there is no trial and error, where there is no failure and success. You would like to run away out of sheer necessity. In the hall, when I speak, it is a necessity to get out of the Mangal Mandir as early as possible because the fellow is boring, the fellow is shouting, the fellow is not leaving, and the time is not running. We somehow control, control, and when the heat is unbearable, we somehow run away to one of the doors. <laughs> One bubble, one prani, one jiva, one drop gets heated up. If, when I lecture, I find one girl standing up, going through the door. That boy has stood up and he runs away, unable to put up with the board, unable to get heated up. We run away. It is a sheer necessity. Then the curiosity begins to work. How does it work? What is the way out? What is the way to moksha? What is the way to go to my beloved? It is a necessity. The whole world is creating that necessity. Punarapi jananam, punarapi maranam, punarapi janani jathare seyanam, iha samsare, karutustare, krupaya apare, pahimurare, bhajagovindam, bhajagovindam. Enough, enough, enough of this. Enough of the exercises, enough of the learning, enough of this world, enough of this janma after janma after janma, enough. I am heated up, I am boiled up, I would like to get out of this, this is 
a necessity. When that necessity is felt in this world, where we have the experiences heating us up, how the three begin to work? Curiosity begins to work for a way out. Love begins to work to go to the place where you have come from to your beloved mother or beloved father or beloved girlfriend or beloved husband or beloved home or beloved place, wherever it is, we would like to run away to the beloved. Love begins to function and there is strong determination to go down to it. That is this vessel. Vessel has the water. Water is a collection of drops and the world is getting heated up. The body is getting heated up. Intellect is getting heated up. Mind is getting heated up. We would like to put in all the yogas into work, functioning. And there is one drop. Where does it go? It makes the way trouble comes to the surface. The moment it goes to the eternity, a vast world, I am free. You have a sigh of relief. You go to any school. The moment at four o'clock the long bell is given, children run back to their houses. They are fed up. Right from 8 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock, the teachers speaking, the experiences. And when we are going home, going to the place where we come from, going to that beloved, we are happy, cheerful. Go to any school, children will be running out of the school. They will be going with pleasure. While going to the school, carrying the LK, uh, 5 kg load, the LKG goes with all burden. Having come, they put up with it. Curiosity will begin to function better when there is necessity. When does that necessity arise? When we are heated up, when there is enough of the day, enough of the burden. That is what is said by Adi Shankara. Then we begin to find out the outlet. It comes to the surface and this. Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa's wonderful parable. One person wanted to have the darshan of the Lord. He went to Sri Ramakrishna, Sir, I want to have moksha. I want to see God. Please show me. Grant me moksha. Grant me liberation. Sri Ramakrishna received him with the warmth of affection. You want to see God? Yes. You would like to have liberation? Yes. You would like to enjoy that total freedom? Yes. Sarukyam, 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 Sayutyam, Sar, I want, sir. Very good. Then he took him to Ganga, Sri Ramakrishna. Wow, he was following. And after reaching Ganga, Ramakrishna is still further walking. Please come, please come. And then it was knee deep water, it was waist deep water, it was neck deep water. He was still going, going, going. And then Sri Ramakrishna placed his head, he placed his hand on the head of the person, pushed it inside. Then the man had all his strength assured him, all his willpower assured him. All his love for the freedom, he struggled himself, came to the surface. Abba, my boy, do you have the same urge to see God? Do you have the same tenacity of purpose to see God, to have the liberation? Do you have the same urge to get that moksha? Our attempts are limited. Our curiosity is not full. Our love is not pure. They are all incomplete. Any of the yogas will have the fulfillment when it is accompanied by the willpower. Our tenacity, our curiosity, our love, they all would like to reach the highest. Four streams of yoga are meant to take us to the sea, the absolute happiness, the absolute reality, the total oneness. 
would you like to go back to our homes? This bubble is the first jiva which has caught the fire of this world, that is Adi Shankara, that is Ramana Maharshi, or that is Chaitanya Prabhu, or that is Mirabai, through the path of devotion, through the path of action, Karma Yoga, Anjaneya Swami fell in love with the Sri Ram. With all determination, he served him and he ultimately got himself identified as one with him. Tvameva aham, ahameva tvam. That is the highest stage. Initially, I am different, you are different. We become parts of the whole next. And finally, we become one with the ocean. All the four streams lead us to Saranagati. Sarva dharmam parityajya, maam ekam sharanam raja, ahamtva sarva papibhyo, mokshayishyami masuchaha. And that is the wonderful promise made by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. All the four streams are interconnected to take us to the top, to take us to liberation, to take us to that ocean of Brahmananda. Having come to Prashanti, let us make use of the four streams to attain that highest state of Brahmananda. The great Yogishwara shows us the path. Let us meditate on Sri Krishna, the great Yogishwara.